Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the footy yarn ahead of the AFLW draft. It's uh, great to be here in the studio. Um, a little bit rushed. Um, the studio is looking a little bit like, I don't know, you were saying nice things about it. I like it. Yeah, but it's sort different. of the, the shirts behind you are like falling off the wall. They're not all on there. Is that, that on camera? That was it. Yeah, this is this is all on camera. Oh, okay. Yeah, so not going to be a good look. But I'm here with um, Caitlin Sirhoy from the Peel Thunder and um, soon to be of probably an interstate club, it would seem, at this rate. Caitlin, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Thank you for having me. Oh, thank you for coming on. Um, yeah, first and foremost, uh, I guess the interstate club thing. How are you feeling, like, knowing that uh, five, five days' time? Yeah, five. Five days' time. You might not be in West Australia anymore. Uh, for me, I think playing nationally, like I had to be realistic with that. And I think moving interstate, it's a, it's a hard thing to think about and to kind of uh, like grasp in a way. But then again, like that was one thing I had to really kind of understand in applying nationally. And I think my mentality in um, nominating um, to go interstate is more I need to get uncomfortable to be comfortable and I think over there I'm fully going to develop as a player and a character um, instead of being here where I, I'm, I know pretty much. You just it. held back. Yeah. Or everyone you know and love is just holding you back yeah, is what I'm, I'm hearing from not this. <laughs> family, friends holding <laughs> you back. It's hard in a way and I think like more family it's going to be harder and definitely friends but I think I've got to be a little bit selfish in a way and like yeah. put my career first and it wasn't an easy decision, um, but I know in the forefront that I won't. I'm not. Oh, I don't regret anything. You know what I mean. And I think in five days' time, whatever club calls out my name, I'm gonna be grateful. So it'll be pretty funny because there's been a whole lot of. It's uncommon for the women to oh, yeah. nominate uh, statewide yeah. across. Like when they're 18, like the mature women do it a lot to try yeah. and get a gig. But it would be really funny if because there's been a lot of media on sort of you and doing it. If you just end up going like West Coast or Freedom. I know. That's, <laughs> that's the irony of it. And I think applying nationally, like you said before, like it gives you 18 opportunities to get yeah. drafted. And I think um, at the start of the year and when I was applying um, for the draft, I kind of was a bit apprehensive about where I was going to go and how many clubs had spoken to me. And I really just wanted to give myself the best opportunity. And since applying nationally, I've had pretty much nearly every club speak to me, which is something that comes with that, obviously, yeah. not having two, but... The opportunities I've been given to speak to these different clubs and their philosophy philosophy about football is is something that I um, really like admire and I think I've got kind of an outlook of every club in a way. So yeah, where would you? I guess we'd go statewide. We won't specify a club because yeah. obviously you're happy to go anywhere. Yeah. What state would you want to go to most? Oh, like you want to say you don't care, but you, yeah, you, you do. do care. Like, I think obviously if the choice was between going to like. Yeah. Just city-wide. Like I think for me, like, being as similar to home would be nice. So, like, a Gold Coast would yeah, be cool. Like, I think that's with everyone's the weather. Answer. That's just the best. Um, and I've got family over there, but I think then again, like, my reasons why I'm going over is primarily because of football. And I think yeah. Melbourne and Vic in itself, it's just so footy fanatic. And yeah, I think over there, it's just footy, footy, footy. That's what I want. So, yeah, for footy, Melbourne, but lifestyle, definitely like Gold Coast. Do you know many girls at, like, other interstate clubs? Because you'd know probably a lot uh, of the girls in WA clubs. Yeah, I know – I don't know personally, like, yeah. a lot of them. I know, like, a few that have traded and stuff like that, but – Like, you know each not, other sort of Yeah, thing, like, it's just more them. mutual. I think uh, coming into this draft, like, I'm a lot closer with the kind of crop that I've been exposed to with the National yeah. Academy. So, if – like I were to go with them, like I'd I'd be totally comfortable. But I think then again, in applying nationally, I wanted to meet new people and have a whole kind of new team that I have to kind of earn respect to. So yeah, now I want to throw back. We'll start with your Peel Thunder career, and I guess getting into that. Where did that start to get into Peel Thunder? Because it's always a bit different for the girls. Yeah, um, I started like everyone else, just socially, and yeah, I could kick a football, so they kind of put my name down to play for the Peel development team, and from there I got scouted from. Uh, state and I've played basically state since 15 been in that campaign but I think I only got picked up at Peel maybe like 2020 and I played like a season of Rogers and then 2021 I got injured with my ankle yep uh, and then the following year so last year I played league played league this year and that's pretty much my Peel career <laughs> yeah how'd you how'd you find like going up to leagues you go from a year like Rogers yeah. which is you know, no offense to the young girls oh, having yeah. a crack in Rogers but 
big difference uh, between the Rogers and the league, and then a year off. And then league footy. Yeah. Like how was that sort of to come straight back into from a year off into senior footy? Yeah, I think for me, having that year off, it was so much fuel for fire and it motivated me so much more watching, obviously, the team win a grand final and stuff like that, me not being a part of that. Um, but I think I was pretty ready to play league. Um, I got really strong, really mentally fit. Uh, and as soon as I hit the track coming back from my injury, I was just... I was ready, like I'd missed it so much. Um, so I think when I debuted, uh, I think I had like twelve disposals, and I did my I did my role in the yeah. wing, which was nice. And oh, you'd be stoked! Yeah, it was pretty rewarding. Oh, game. yeah, that's what I mean. Like I think for me coming back, missing a whole year, I was just wanting to play, and I didn't care how many touches I. I've never been a stats person, even with my basketball history, but like I just wanted to be in a team that valued me, and that whole kind of season I had off with my injury, they respected me so much and supported me throughout that whole time and I think I was ready made for that, that yeah. one gig so yeah you were you came in like just after they had what, two premierships, two premierships in, a in a row yeah do you reckon you were the reason they fell apart <sighs> I hope not yeah. I, <laughs> I don't know I think uh last year uh I really enjoyed my time in league and I yeah. think there was a different kind of crop until there was a lot of ins and outs yeah there was a lot of ins and outs we had lots of injuries yeah. last year um and I think just having – injecting some youth in there as well, it's a lot different. Yeah. Um, you know what I mean? And I think uh, especially this year, we injected a lot of youth. Like yeah, our team yeah, was like so young. 16-year-olds. Yeah, and it's just our team was so young. And not to say that the youth weren't good. Like they're so, no. they're so good. Um, it's more just – it comes with experience and that's something I'm learning as well. Yeah. Um, and it is a big jump from Rogers. Um, the intensity – the, the bodies you're kind of facing. But I think also then again, it's trying to fit players in certain positions, seeing who works well with another. And I think as well as – as much as this year was frustrating personally, just being kind of in and out of peel with state and injury, um, it was hard to get that flow and that consistency personally. But I think that team also struggled with that consistent um, yeah. effort each week, which – do you feel like a bit flat when you come into a side that's won two flags and then like oh, you don't want to like you, it's obviously no one expects to yeah, win a flag but it's, you go into a team that's won back to back and you're like No, yeah, it was here. it's motivating because like who wins back to back premierships? You yeah. know I mean? Like it's it's pretty motivating. But I did play in a Rogers grand final the year they won their Ooh. grand final against Subi. We lost her. Oh. Um yeah, but So the youth is bringing down the club. <laughs> yeah, probably. <laughs> nah. But it's it's hard to live up to that reputation. I think going into this season, we were known as the back-to-back club and I, um, we kind of – it's hard when you've got that reputation. Like, you yeah. want to live up to it. But then again, like like I said before, we had so much different kind of players in our team. Um, and I think we are kind of at that bottom kind of three at the moment, but that's something that – um, we're going to take on our shoulder and we're just growing from here. And I think we've got a new coach now, um, Ethan, back at Peel. Um, and he's coached a lot of boys. He's, I think he's won, like, back-to-back premierships yeah. with, like, coaching at Hull's Head. Um, so he kind of, he knows what it takes to be at that highest level. And I think um, he's – I've been to two weeks of preseason so far. <laughs> but – when I've, like no, no. <laughs> but when I've been there, like, yeah. he's just been unreal and he's really pushed us to kind of – take on to the next level and I think we're running like eight or nine K sessions, which is something that we've never done yet at Peel. Fair few kilometers. Yeah, that, so that it's we're getting like K's into the legs, we're working hard. Is that doing like just lots of running or uh, is that all running with the footy? I think most of it's so we do like S and C for like twenty minutes and then yeah. you uh, depends what level you're at. Uh, I try to push myself in S and C so I, I think I get a few K's in there but <laughs> okay, it's more than anyone else. All right, but <laughs> it's more tickets. like it's more game fitness, and I think in that kind of um, like training drills, I think we're pushing ourselves harder. Whereas last year, it might have kind of looked like a bit of a piss take yeah. in a way, um, and kind you of rocking yeah. up for you know what I mean, just like fun. And in saying that, so many girls at Peel are there for different reasons. Like yeah. some are there to gain fitness, some are there to have fun, and then some are there like myself who are wanting to get drafted. So yeah. There is a different jump in intensities, but I think this year we're trying to kind of um, keep the standard the same amongst yeah. everyone. You don't realise how much of a difference it makes. Oh, when, yeah. Because it's so easy, to, especially when you're young, like go to footy training and you're just there with your mates taking no, yeah. the piss. Like I how much of a difference it makes. You're just like, 
genuinely sprint through things. Oh, no, that. yeah. I think also coming from, like, state and being exposed to national yeah. Cases, yeah, the difference in, like, intensity, but I think that comes along with, like, professionalism and how you get treated there. Um, at the academy, we kind of got treated as, like, AFLW players. Like, we yeah. were kind of living the dream pretty much. State, we try to keep that same standard, but when you go back to kind of Peel and Claremont and all that, it's – everyone's different and everyone has a different way about going yeah. about training, like – that's also just growth of the women's yeah. game as well. Like yeah. in a few years, it'll probably just be the oh yeah. Set and I think standard. that's what I mean. Like we're setting the standard now, so we can yeah. grow in the future. Um, and that's something that I wish I could be a part of. It'd be nice to win a premiership, but you know what I mean. Like I think I've left a good kind of um, not legacy because I haven't done anything, <laughs> but like you've trailblazed. I don't know. Yeah, you've I think I think I've led enough. pretty well, and yeah. I'm being one of the kind of I'm technically classified as like an oldie there because yeah. it's just. You know what I mean? Such Everyone's young so team. young, yeah. but I think this year, like, I'm really just trying to um, lead and kind of be like a role model for all those kind of youth coming in, which is really nice. So yeah. Now, as far as like, I, I don't know much about most of the waffle clubs, but the relationship between the men's and the women's club is there yeah. much interlinking between the two? Because uh, I know, obviously, you went to school with Mitch. Yeah. And um, I think you're friends with one of the other guys yeah. there, Joel. Uh, I, think you, I don't know, you guys might be friends. Oh, but, like, obviously, you know you know a couple of the guys yeah. at uh, Peel. Is it a good relationship between the two? I think I think we try and integrate as much as possible. We do run a lot of clinics where it is boys and girls, but I think, obviously, knowing, like, Mitch, Joel, Clay, like, a few of those boys from State and, obviously, my boyfriend. Yeah. Hi, Joel. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> You're really but I think That's enough for him. like, knowing them and I've gotten to grow – lots of closer relationships with the boys kind of program and like the coaches there. I think yeah. Sam Skinner is definitely one person that um, I'd like to talk to about um, issues and stuff like that. He's, I think he's now, a, I don't know what he's called. He's moved up a notch. I though. did hear, I was actually, not to brag, I was in the car with Clay when he was on the, on the phone with Skinner and Skinner was giving him the whole routine. No, and yeah. He was just on loudspeaker and I was no, like, can he's, we wrap this thing up? Yeah, he's up there now. But yeah. uh, he, something, I think, He's seen kind of where I've progressed this year and yeah. last year and whenever I'm at the club, he's always there, so he's good to talk to. But I do think we do integrate pretty well, which is nice. Yeah. But, yeah. Futures game, yeah. Um, talk about that. What was that experience like? Obviously, you're playing with 40-odd, 40-odd yeah. girls where, like, most of you don't know each other. Yeah. You know, how many girls from WA was there? There was you. I think there was maybe six or seven, I think. There was, was quite that many. Yeah, there was quite a few, actually. I know there was you, there was Jamie. Jamie. Was Georgie there? Was she? Georgie, Banjo, Tyler Fitzgerald. Yeah. Kayla Vand and Kayla. Heba. Yeah, I think so, yeah. Yeah. Maybe six then. I know, but, like, you're coming together yeah. with this squad. Oh, yeah. Like, it was a bit – what's it like playing with that group of girls where it's, like, most of you don't yeah. know each other? I think, for me, like, I'm a very extroverted person and I find it easy to build relationships with different people and – that was something that I was really looking forward to, like meeting new girls and kind of being exposed to pr- pretty much the best 40 in the nation, which yeah. is cool. And I was honoured to be a part of that. But I think definitely travelling over with a solid group of girls that I'm pretty close with, with Georgie and Jamie. Um, we've travelled heaps together for football and I think that's kind of grew our bond closer. But I think if I go anywhere with them, like I'm just comfortable and they're a great bunch of girls. But I think broadening my horizons and kind of – and meeting new people was great. And I think being exposed to um, high-level football like that and kind of representing, like I said before, like the best 40 in a sense. But, no, it was good. I got to play in the midfield. I don't think I came off, which is – no, I didn't come off actually. Like just rolling through the midfield all game? I was just rolling through the midfield the whole game. And I think <sighs> – That's just – No, it was pretty good though. Like No, that's intense. That's no, I know. And, like, in saying that, like, when I look at back at my games that I've played, like, that's one game where I think I've – kind of showcase my strengths in my running ability. And I mean, why would they bench you? You were playing pretty well. <laughs> and then I think obviously like winning best on for my side, like yeah. that was rewarding as well because it gave me so much confidence that like I could actually go far um, with footy. And um, you know what I mean? It's nice to get rewarded like that. And, and it, it was a shock, but then again, like I kind of went in very open-minded and I usually get a bit of performance anxiety before I play. Like that's something that I've kind of dealt with this year, but. During that game, like, I just tried to soak up the environment and yeah. who I was representing pretty much. And I really, like, had fun 
and it kind of reflected, which was nice. Yeah. How have you found dealing with performances? Performance anxiety because yeah. I hate it. Oh, like yeah. I refuse to let people come watch me play yeah. sports because I like hate. Like I'm not good no, at it. No, but I, like, that's, no, I'm the exact mean. same though. Like, I, yeah. It, I, how do you deal with it? I think for me, like it's just the reality of playing like high level football. I think yeah. with my national academy, like I really just wanted to play good footy because I had such a frustrating year, and I think being touted as like quite a high prospect for your state, it's it's hard to kind of comprehend and understand because I'm so new to the game too um and no doubt you're going to get media along the way and I and I love it and I think I thrive off um criticism but then again like leading to games you want to kind of uh, like honor that and yeah. kind of represent you know what I mean like that you are that yeah. kind of figure but then again like this year I've learned to kind of keep to my close circle which is my family my friends my manager kind of people that have my best interest in me. Um, and that's where I kind of um, seek my criticism from, my uh, support and stuff like that. So that's something that I've tried to implement. But then again, like, it's just a reality of sport. You're always yeah. going to get the pressure and the anxiety. And it's it's all internal. It's definitely not external. I have no pressure from my family or the media or clubs, nothing like that. There's no pressure. I think it just comes from kind of within. Like, I have a big drive to play and um play good football and kind of be the best I can be um and that goes for every avenue even with school like I was like that as well but no it's something that I've kind of had to learn to deal with and um no doubt that I'll find different kind of avenues to escape that but yeah that's something I've tried to kind of implement what kind of like anxiety was it was it like you felt sick before a game it, or like just it's more like you kind of for me uh, I know girls get sick before the games. I do feel a bit anxious in that sense that I feel like I'm about to vomit. But yeah. for me, it's more I'm like already playing the game in my mind. Right. And I'm playing what I'm doing and I'm playing how I'm performing. And I mean, like that's a, almost a good thing in a way. Like it is. It is in a sense. Get, but yeah. like, I don't want to predetermine what's going to happen. I just yeah. want to play and play my style of football. And I think like kind of, like I said, predetermining what's going to happen and how the game's going to go and how I'm going to kind of play my style of football. I get in my head so much. And yeah, you then set I'm the bar like, in your own head. Yeah, I'm kind of like, oh, if I don't play like this, then I've played like, sorry, shit. Yeah, like, I'll allow it this one time. <laughs> I've done it. <laughs> that's the one. <laughs> no, but that's just how I think about it. And I think uh, it's hard to turn it off, but I, when I play my best footy, I'm present and I'm yeah. playing for fun and I'm playing my role and that's something that, I value and how I play my style of football, but it's not easy. So yeah, but yeah. And when you finish that futures game, got a little medal around your neck. <laughs> says you're best on ground for your team. Yeah, but best on ground nonetheless. Yeah, you know it was a year ago, so you can be honest. Yeah, was the ego a bit inflated? Oh, were you feeling a bit like? <laughs> were you looking at all the other girls you'd flown over with and being like, "What'd you do?" Yeah, well, I'm going to be honest. Like. <laughs> When you receive good. something like that, yeah, it feels yeah. good. Like, holy shit, I'm, I'm best on, you yeah. know what I mean? Like, it's cool and it gives you kind of a, a reality check that, oh, like, I could be in this top 10, I could be in this top 20. And yeah. I, I'm i a very humble person in the sense that, like, I once the game's over, I forget about it. I'm yeah. no better than the last game I played. So I went back to Peel. Um, I didn't really think about it too much, I, you know what I mean? And even now to this day, like, I got people – on Monday this week, oh, he ain't drafted, you know what I mean? And yeah. it's – people can say that, but I'm not drafted until my name's called out. And if, even if I am, I'm going to be in a club where, like, uh, my kind of philosophy about it is when I'm at Peel, like, I'm no better than no one else there. Like, I'm no yeah. better than anyone. Um, even though I've got these kind of uh, things across my name, like, I'm no better than anyone else there. And I just try to keep as humble as possible and – um. After winning that MVP, yeah, I was stoked. And yeah. I rung my dad, my mum, Joel, all that um, jazz. But, like, I kind of forgot about it. And I think when you're surrounded by friends like Jamie and Georgie, you just ha- you just talk and you don't think about it as much. So I didn't get a medal. I got a football. So oh. And it's deflated now and it's used. So, like, that's I don't um, think about it at all. That's pretty skint. Yeah, I know. You I have to wonder, like, they say they respect the women's Yeah, game, I know. But I, was like, a- I got a football. It was like AFLW Academy or something. I was like, oh. Oh, lovely. Yeah, sick. It was a good footy though. Yeah, to be well, fair. Yeah. so thanks. But yeah, Maybe next time would be nice. I don't really think about it too much. I'm gonna so. think about it. I'm gonna have sleepless nights. That's so disrespectful. I'll make sure you get your medal. <laughs> I'll see who we can talk to. But yeah.
Um, now, the AFL Academy, what was that experience like going up? Again, uh, I guess pretty similar, but cut down. You, there's more intimacy with the girls in terms of like staying with this group, yeah. training together, playing together. What was that experience like for you? Uh, I really was looking forward to it and I was honoured to be called up um, by Tux and getting the phone call that I made the academy um, and be recognised as kind of a high prospect from my state. Um, and being alongside Georgie and Jamie, that's what I mean when I say we've got such a close relationship because we're this journey that we're, that we're taking, it's with each other. Like we've basically experienced everything together yeah. with our footy careers. So it's really cool to share that with them um, and share that special bond. But I think also forming and developing relationships with the Futures game. We just were so excited to see those girls again. And um, like rocking up to training – I think everyone has such a like-minded goal and that's to get drafted. Um, so the training intensity was just next level. And I think no one's there individually, like no one's there um, for their own benefit. I think like when we played the game, uh, there was no individual standouts. Like, yeah, some girls played amazing, but we were just playing as a team and I had so much fun because I was playing my role and playing for the team. But no, I think the jump in intensity and that kind of exposure – we were treated like AFL athletes and it was pretty cool. Yeah. So. Who was – was there anyone that, like, really stood out to you? Maybe just the standards of their training? Um, I, I think you can't go past Goody. I think oh, the way she goes about her football, like, she's very – she's a, a different character in the sense that she's very, like, introverted but also, like, an extrovert, like, once yeah. you get to know her. But I think once she's at training, she's locked in. Like, whereas – when I go about my football, when I'm at training, like I still have a laugh here and then. Not that she doesn't, but the way she goes about her football, she's just so locked in and wants to get better each day. And I think she's kind of proven that, you know what I mean? Yeah. And to get picked up already, like, it's just so cool, you know what I mean? And I think having experienced um, how girls go about their football, it's it's cool to see, like, where you stand in their kind of yeah. realm. So, I know. Pretty cool. What was the big takeaway for you from there? I don't know if there is sort of like a tangible takeaway, yeah. but like if there was anything you could look back and think, I maybe couldn't have this as a part of my game if not for the academy, what would it yeah. be? Yeah, I think for me it was the resources and professionalism. Um, like the places we got to go to, uh, like the things we received. Like I think we got three uh, – I know I got three pairs of Nike footy boots and it was like – how come they can give you that but not a medal? <laughs> like, what's going on? I don't know, but it was just like, it was crazy. Like, the amount of resources we got given, oh, the people we met, like. Yeah, they did you. I saw all the yeah, photos. Yeah, it was, was pretty like, cool. And I'm dishing pretty, up. I know, and I think we met Taylor Harris, um, Maddie Press Barkis, and the whole lot, and speaking to them and getting their insight was pretty cool as well. And then resources like the boots, the people there, Tarkin, Pole. Yeah. Um, you kind of just learn a lot from them. And then we also had Smitty on board um, and Tanya Harrington from yeah. GWS. Uh, they're pretty cool people and they worked a lot with us. Um, but no, I think for me, the biggest takeaway was definitely like professionalism Um and kind of trying to keep that same standard when I come back to stay and back to peel. And it's hard because it is a different jump in levels and intensity, but I think definitely trying to keep the standard the same. So. Yeah, and you talked about uh, trying to take that standard, obviously, to peel, but sort of in between to state champs, to the WA squad. Yeah. What did that look like? Obviously, yourself, Jamie, Georgie, there's... It wasn't a great deal of, like, top-age girls no, in, in this state side for WA. Nah. So, like, you're already going to be leaders. Like, all the girls that are 18, 19 years old yeah. are already going to be leaders. But then you three, especially coming from the academy, what did it look like for you three to try and implement, you know, what you'd learned from the academy into the state squad? Yeah, I think for me, like, at state I was kind of known as kind of a muck around. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. I never really took anything seriously. But I think this year I kind of changed my mentality just because there was a lot of youth um, and they kind of needed to know the standard about being at kind of the state level. Um, but I think for me, kind of leading from the forefront and kind of sharing my experience because not a lot of girls yet to kind of get exposed to that. And I think – if I can come back and Georgie and Jamie can do the same and kind of share our knowledge and share what we learnt over there, that was kind of the main point. But then again, like, we learnt so much about footy over there and, like, the IQ around it and kind of just trying to set a, set a standard and kind of leave kind of the intensity to take care of itself, you know what I mean? But yeah. 
Yeah. And that was your second champs experience. <laughs> yeah. So how did it compare? Obviously, first time round, it's you're taking it seriously both times, but it's a bit more funner games the first yeah. time round. So it's just on field. How different did it feel comparative yeah. to your first champs? Yeah, I think uh, first year I was with so many older girls. Like there wasn't a lot of youth in that um, first champs team. But I think for me. It wasn't about playing good football. It was just about learning and learning how other people play, especially like someone like Ella Roberts. Like I played with her a bit yeah. at Hill, but I think our state champs, we got a lot closer um, and just seeing how she prepares and stuff like that. And I think that kind of transitioned to this year where I wanted to be that kind of Ella Roberts figure, like a leader in a sense and kind of um, – you not replicate my game off her, but kind of idolise someone in a sense. Yeah. And be like that leader and that role model for all the youth this year. Yeah, which was be really who cool. she was to you, yeah. to the younger kids. But then again, like, in saying that, like, there's no... Just because there's an age gap, there's no difference between levels. Like, yeah. an Evie Couch, for say. Well, three of the like, girls I, that were bottom age. I love that was. kid, but she's just, like, unreal. Yeah. And for her to win kind of the, the champs medal for our state, like, that just proves that just because you're young, it doesn't mean... What I mean, like yeah, especially in the girls' comp, like oh, the younger yeah. girls are regularly the best girls. Oh yeah, and I think like I took a lot from her, but she also took a lot from me in a sense. Yeah. Like we're completely different players, but I think uh, we go about our football differently as well, which is cool. Um, but no, I think trying to kind of yes, like I said before, be that leader um, and be kind of maybe like I don't know, like a. A role model for girls to idolize. <laughs> really, <I guess>. really <laughs> t- tiptoeing around that word. Not, I don't even know what to say. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So you're a role model. Yeah. Role okay, model. we got there. Um, yeah, now playing, obviously, in WA, we don't really play 18s footy. Like, there's the Rogers Cup, but pretty much all the girls who are playing state 18s aren't playing Rogers Cup. They're yeah. playing league footy. Same in the Sandful. Um, and then the Allies, Vic, all those guys play, or all those girls play under-18s in yeah. the talent league. So what's the difference like going from playing senior footy to playing 18s footy? Like how do you feel your game changes? I think from Peel to State, the jump in, again, intensity is different. I think the game at State is a lot quicker um, and you have to think more on your toes, whereas back at Peel, it's more... Girls are stronger. Uh, yeah. It really depends where you play. I just feel like the game goes a lot quicker at state. I'm having to run a bit more um, and kind of take more risks in a sense. But then again, like, they're, tip, they're different comps. Like, the champs is just kind of show your strengths and expose yourself um, to clubs in a sense. Um, but then also having team success as well. But whereas Pill, it's just you're playing for your club and you want to play – your role and win. So I think there's – you can take two different things out of it. I know definitely this year that I wanted to have individual perform- um, success but then also team success as well. Yeah. Whereas last year I didn't really care about my individual um, performance. It was more learning. Um, but Peel this year, again, that individual success was really important to me but then also that team kind of um, – success as well but I don't know I think for me it was just definitely that kind of the running um the youth the, the risks taking whereas Peel it's a little bit more structured because yeah. you don't have a lot of time obviously with the state squad like yeah we train twice a week to three times a week but it wasn't a lot of time to get um like a bond with everyone as much as you are training a really long time it's hard to grow relationships really quick and even if you do have a relationship off the field, it's hard to play like that on the field when you've never played with these people before because you've come from yeah. different clubs. So I think it was more about just playing your role, doing it well, run, show your strengths. Um, and yeah. Yeah. Now, obviously, we've talked about having performance anxiety and yeah. most of that being internal pressure. Yeah. Did you feel like there's internal pressure to be a key player in this champs as one of the mature girls, as one of the girls that were – you know, the best pins from all the media and all the scouts across the the nation. Did you feel that pressure internally to try and step up? Yeah, I I definitely did. And I think um, the media looks a little bit more on the champs than they do to swaffle. Yeah. Um, So if you do play a bad game, you'll hear about it. And I think that's just the reality of football. But 100% there was a lot more pressure this year, especially being my draft year. And I think having a frustrating season with Peel, I just really kind of wanted to – um, give it last like one last crack with my national campaigns and just pr- 
prove my strength and expose myself that little bit more. And I think being recognised as an All Australian um, was really rewarding and it gave me a lot more confidence heading into the draft. Whereas probably a month before that, I was a bit apprehensive and nervous just because I didn't know where I stood in that crop. But I think, yeah, being a mature age player, being a draft year, it's definitely a lot of pressure. And I think... I remember last year being a bottom major. I remember Tara saying, like, as much as you're in this academy, it is about the top ages as well. Like, this yeah. is our draft year and we really want you to showcase your strength but then also showcase our strengths. And I think that's something that I also took away this year is, like, it, it's not all about the, the top ages, but then again, it is. It is. Like, it's, it's your draft year. And I think no one says it out loud, but yeah, it's the reality. The like, whole point of the champs is to show yeah. off the draft prospects. I think also as well like it is cool for upcoming talent like yeah. the evie couches and stuff like that but then again like all the pressure pretty much is on your mature age players yeah so and your, your top and age there was players. like a handful of you yeah there was like i reckon there was like seven or yeah. five or something like that something crazy but yeah yeah and coming away again another little honor all australian yeah. do you actually receive anything for no. being an australian <laughs> that's so so I think the boys do. That's the thing. Like what when, when Dan won, he got a medal, and I'm pretty sure no, the futures he, game. Oh he yeah, yeah, he got a medal, and they the all got game. boots as well for their futures campaign. We didn't get anything like that, but I think the boys they got like a plaque, maybe. No, I know they did. They I don't know because all the ones that played the national academy, I know most of those blokes would frame there or lose jumper. True. Or true. So it is a bit confusing. I don't know. I don't know if they give you anything for being. No, I don't think they do. I think you just literally just get recognised. Either way, yeah. um, we can't get a quality in the AFL until the AFL starts giving you guys what they give <laughs> the other draft prospects. No, but I think like. Like I said before, being recognised for that, it was super yeah. rewarding. And that I needed was all it. the reward it Yeah, needed. I really needed it to kind of boost my confidence. Yeah. Um, kind of leading into the draft, which was cool. So. Yeah, how much of a relief is that when you oh. like... Because like, it's, it's exciting, but I guess also in that yeah. way, it's a relief. That's what I mean. Like. I think when when it is your draft year, it's, ho- it's so hard to kind of like understand because everyone's is different. But for me, like every time I did something good, it was just relief. Yeah. It wasn't, oh, my gosh, yeah, like, I've done this. It was more, whew, like, now I can take a little breath and, like, chill a bit about the draft because I know it's, it might be different for everyone. Like, I know I'm a stress head, but I've so- spoken to Evie Couch. Her draft's not in t- two years or whatever, but she's yeah. just so laid back. Like, she doesn't care. Whereas, like, Georgie, I know she's a bit apprehensive. Jamie, we're all nervous. So yeah, I think everyone goes about it differently. But for me, definitely, like, I was so stressed about the draft and still am right now, yeah. but... It's so relieving when you've got clubs speaking to you and um, being rewarded for your your individual performance as well, which is yeah, it's nice. So yeah, they um, had a great photo come out of the champs. Oh my one, the god, one with the, <laughs> the peace sign. Yeah, I love it. Nah, all, these, all these um bloody like media articles are doing me so dirty. You were using bad photos. Oh or? my gosh, I, I spoke to Eliza from Code Sports. I think. Yeah. last week yeah, so and she asked me for a photo and i was yeah. like thank god so i can actually send a tough yeah now nah, looking up photos you get some oh my god they're actually horrible yeah but i'm not very photogenic but <laughs> no, the peace sign's probably my favorite one I've, i saw that photo it was cool i looked it up uh, like looked you up and saw that photo i was like sick it's cool <laughs> that's so I posted on Instagram, I was like, I have yeah to. that's like the best thing you can come no. away with in the champs it was yeah. like the peace sign photo all australian <laughs> Definitely. Um, now, nominating nationally, we did talk about it a little bit. Um, yeah. You know, I guess the fear factor of it and all. What was, like, when did the decision-making process begin for you yeah. that you could sort of nominate nationally? Because I think going into a lot of the girls, you'd know better than I would, um, but it's not even on their head, like, going nationally because yeah. of the way that AFLW has been before. So, yeah. like, when did it sort of enter your mind to perhaps nominate nationally? I think for me... When I went to National Academies at the start of this year, we got spoken a lot about um, how this is changing in terms of how the AFLW is going to go about its footy. Um, And the draft was a major one. I think getting the option this year um, and being the first crop to experience applying nationally was a huge factor. And I think Tark's really kind of emphasised the fact that if we want to get to where the boys are with their draft, we need to um, kind of reinforce that there is a national option and that yeah. that is um, available for us girls. And for me, uh, I had to think about it a bit more than just that. 
um, yeah. it, it took me a little bit more convincing. Especially for being from WA. Oh, WA yeah. is the, it's so expensive to go anywhere. Yeah. So it's, it's you know, inaccessible to other no, states. Yeah. And I think for the Vic Girls, like, they have, I think it's eight clubs they can choose for. Is it eight? Is it ten? Ten? Maybe? Ten? I don't know. Something like that. I think it's ten. Let's go with ten. Okay. Well, they've yeah, got ten. ten. So if they apply, they've ten. got ten clubs. Whereas yeah. if I'm applying state, I've got two. Yeah. So their chances are just way ahead of mine. And I think for me, my first leading factor was definitely I want to kind of open my opportunity to get drafted um, and double it, not double it. Um, you know what I mean? Like give myself sixteen more clubs to kind of choose yeah. from. And then kind of looking at it deeper, I kind of thought about it more. And just told myself that I need to get uncomfortable to be comfortable and I need to be somewhere new to develop. And I think for me, I wanted to develop both my football but then also as a character as well. And I think being over there and being more kind of footy, 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 it's gonna, I think it's just going to benefit me more. Yeah. So. Did it help that like I was already in Melbourne and that sort of like <sighs> made it, like you saw that and you were like, well, now I know it's possible to like go <sighs> into state and make it I, work. I think like... It's it's def it's not easy and I think obviously you'll know it too, but no. it it's a hard decision to make, but yeah. I think my career and where I want to go with football is over there. I think it's, yeah, it's exciting. You know I mean? Yeah, like, it's exciting. You get more over there. And I, it's bigger. Yeah, it and it's bigger. Not to say that, you know, in three years you're gonna request a trade home, but like oh, yeah. you know at the end of the day I can always come back. You can always come home if you don't like yeah. it. And it's such a it's such a great opportunity when you're young to be able to move yeah. across the country. I think also, yeah, else. getting that experience in if I were to get drafted to an interstate club, like yeah. having my experience first over there, um, would be pretty like surreal and Yeah. You know what I mean? Like knowing that I've been over there and I've t- taken a risk and kind of Learn from them, and then always there's always a trade. You know what I mean? Yeah, you can always come back if you really wanted to. Well, so. now I know what's getting released after this, <laughs> Kaylin. So we will request what? a trade home if no. you to state. <laughs> Finally got. I was, I've out. been working on getting that answer out of you. I needed a grab. No, so, but um, like it's relieving to know that if I I was homesick, to say the options always the options there always in a there. few years time. Yeah. So to be able to come back. That's definitely nice, yeah. Um, now, you're a very, like, a utility. You know, you can play sort of wing, yeah. you can go forward, you can go down back, you can yeah. play inside mid. Where would you say is your best and favourite position? I'd say my most comfortable position is on the wing. Yeah. Um, But I don't mind, like, uh, going inside mid and using my um kind of explosiveness and my speed to get away from people. I'm obviously not a very, like, mature-sized body, I say, like a J- Jamie Henry, who's a yeah. bull. But... I think it is fun rolling through there. But then again, like, I've never really been exposed to playing in, like, the back line or the forward line. Like, I am yeah. versatile. I you do 100% agree there, that. Not, I can yeah. play anywhere. I reckon if you put me in a position, I'd I'd play it well. But I think then again, like, I have never been exposed to yeah. playing there. So it is cool and it's exciting. And that's – when I speak to clubs, that's something that I mentioned that I have a lot of upside because I haven't been exposed. Tickets on yourself. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I, I love to talk about myself. Yeah. But, no, nah, like – yeah, I do have a lot of upside in that sense that I'm still learning the game. I've still got room for improvement with my skills. I'm not a finished product and no one is, but I haven't been exposed to those kind of different different roles. So, yeah, it's pretty cool. But Yeah, you were saying you had an interview go for an hour and 40 minutes. Yeah. What was your longest interview with the club? Definitely that. that. one? Yeah. And it only finished because the iPad died? Yeah. Oh, at the start, my, my iPad was going a little bit flat. It was a little bit frantic, but no, I think... Even if that didn't happen, like, it was just, like, a long was meeting. Was it, like, a good chat? But that's just, the thing, like, yeah. you get meetings and it's, like, it goes for 40 minutes, but it's just they get into the point where it's, you've yeah. got meetings. It's, like, this is going for so long because we're having, like, a, a good a, chat. Yeah, conversation. And I love when clubs speak to me about myself and myself as a character, not just a yeah. football player, because I think if you want to know me as a football player, you can go watch me play. Yeah. Whereas if – and this is something I really emphasise as well is – when you go into a club, it's you you can build on skills, but you can't build on character. Like yeah. you can't change old habits, you can't change the philosophy of how you think and who you are as a person. I think I'm really strong on that. So I think speaking to lots of different clubs, they they view me higher than what I was probably um, touted to be before they 
Has, as a pick to me. or as a as a pick, yeah, yeah. Okay. or as a player. But I think yeah. I've gone up a little bit just because of my character and yeah. um, how I present myself and kind of my God, brand. The tickets on this, no, just, uh, I love it. So no, but, I'm just like one of the better people <laughs> in the draft. Clubs love me. No, I'm but such like, a good person. Not that like say rookie me or whatever. Like yeah. they know what they're talking about because they don't know what the clubs have in mind. But mm. clubs have shown a lot more interest now that they know me as a person. Yeah. Um, so should I be telling the people over at Rookie Me to get us together? Should I be meshing Peter Williams and saying, no, hey, mate, you have no, not got it right at all? No, but, like, it's so it's so nice and so comforting to know that clubs are reaching out for a second and a third time because they love me as a person, yeah. not just as a player, and they think I'm going to suit their club well because of my, like, charisma in a way. Um, I find that... I find that more rewarding than playing football in a way that yeah. people like me as a person, not just as a player. Yeah. Which is really cool. Uh, now, you had you were talking about your injury. Yeah. That sort of started. When I looked it up, and this is, I believe, the Code Sports interview, yeah. the article, I don't know if it was just a grab, but I wasn't paying to read it. No, um, no, it's like a dollar. <laughs> no, I'm not doing that. <laughs> what do you expect? I can just ask you. So here I am, I'm <laughs> saving myself the dollar. It was like, this is the basketball injury that got Caitlin Serhoy into I know, I saw the that. AFLW I draft. It's like... Was it sort of like that or was it just like you got injured and stopped playing basketball as a it, result of it? I know it sounds really dramatic, but like for me, it was pretty like yeah, like life-changing in a sense because I played basketball my whole life and I represented WA. I got an NBL1 contract. So I was playing like pretty high-level basketball and yeah. the, the pathway is not as clear as say, but for me, having that injury and kind of being ruled out of sport, it did take a toll both physically but mentally as well, like... It, my recovery wasn't just linear. I was fluctuating all the time and I learned a lot about myself mentally. And I think um, being told I have to choose two, between two sports um, to juggle ATAR and being told my ankle probably wouldn't be able to um, hold the physical capabilities of both. I had to choose one. And I think it wasn't an easy decision, but basketball is just not how I like to play my sport. I'm a very yeah. team player and Basketball, you can have one player and that can be the whole team, you know what yeah. I mean? And it's very um, kind of stats-based and I'm not one to, like, go off that. And I think footy, for me, the environments, I go out there, play my role and play it well and play for the team as yeah. well as that individual success as well. And I think that was definitely the turning point in my decision. Um, and I, I don't regret it. Like, I don't really miss basketball a lot. Um, but, yeah, that was pretty much it. It it's, when they talk about it, it does seem a bit dramatic, but yeah, they, it, it yeah. was it for was you, really yeah. life changing for me because that's yeah. all I knew. Like basketball was my sport, and yeah. footy was so new to me. And I think I was only playing football for a year um, prior to my injury. So, like playing basketball for eight years and playing foot for football for a year, like being able to make my mind up, like. It was weird because... Do you reckon... I don't know if you had it then. Do you reckon the performance anxiety had anything to do with it? Because oh. it's so much more like a single sport. Because yeah. I know what you mean. I like playing footy because it's like... You can just be effort-based. Yeah. Yeah. Like if you're having a bad game, you can still just yeah. put effort in. And like I think for fun. me, like in basketball, like I just didn't... I, didn't, I wasn't much of a scorer. I was more of a sister and like a real tag defender. Yeah. And I loved playing that role. So I did not care. Yeah. But I think it just got to a point where I was just not enjoying myself anymore and... The higher you go, the more people take it seriously. And I was just not taking it as like, yeah. serious, I think. And for me, football and where women's footy was at when I was kind of making my decision, the pathway was just so much more clear. And I knew I could kind of reach that potential, whereas basketball was kind of unknown. And I just wasn't motivated to play basketball anymore. So, like, I don't think I had a lot of performance anxiety with basketball, but... Just lost the passion. I just lost the passion, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And that's, that's normal. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, but yeah. Now, I've got one final thing. Um, oh, God. It was just, it was just one uh, video that was sent to me. Um, so Oh, no. 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 So we talked about this. Yeah, I know we talked about it, but Joel sent it to me. <laughs> Thanks, Joel. <laughs> and um, Caitlin Sir Hoy 7272. Oh. Vine's so good. Have you seen any of the videos? Lately? I've actually blocked the account, so I can't go back. All right, we'll talk no, about it. I'll bring it up. Don't, don't drop that duck, duck. Hey, don't drop that duck, duck. <laughs> so, <laughs> um, obviously, Rookie Me, oh. I've accidentally uh, found the wrong account. <laughs> oh, <laughs> it's, it's actually, it was quite it's, embarrassing. I was, I went on my meeting and I got yeah. off and Jay messaged me. He goes, you won't believe what happened. And I was like, what? It she was goes, 
Hilarious. They charged your old account. I messaged Joel last night. I was like, hey, mate, have you got, like, anything I could probably, you know, <laughs> stitch up um, Caitlin with? And he was like, you wouldn't actually believe it. I just had this sent to me 20 minutes ago. I wasn't sure what it was going to be. And then it got sent to me, and I actually... Co- I couldn't believe it. Nah. It was dead rogue. It's so rogue. And I think... It was... It was bound to happen. And ever yeah. since I made that account, I'm like, looking back, even when I was in basketball, and, like, when I was... Oh, it's going to sound so bad. I can't even talk about this. But <laughs> when I was, like... Trying to like date people. I was so scared that I'll look up my account on Instagram and find it. I'm like, what the fuck? No, nah, that's valid. <laughs> no, like it's it was bound to happen as much as it's just like embarrassing. I was yeah. eight years old, like yeah. get over it. You know what I mean? Like yeah. I don't actually care. I actually I was a little worried because like what your response was gonna be. Not to this, no, but yeah. to like seeing it again. I was like, Oh, what if she I've f- blocked it, I don't Well, yeah, I was like, what if she finds a way to take it down? So I actually screen recorded that just to be safe. I'm so excited. So I just wanted to no, make sure I, I had it. I so. hell wanted to message. Like Joel was like, why don't you just message them? I'm like, I'm not messaging them. Like, what, just, rookie man? Yeah, I'm like, I don't really care that much. Yeah. I'm like, they have like 20,000 followers. I'm like, yeah. if they want to see, they can see. But yeah. it's pretty embarrassing. But I'm just Pretty care. funny. It's pretty funny. Yeah, um, yeah so that's how I've got Well, to be fair though, I sung in front of my whole school. I sung a song in front of my whole school. What song? So, um, Everywhere by Fleetwood Mac. Please. No, I've retired. No, right. <laughs> Please. I want to be <laughs> <laughs> that was good. I can't like I've literally. Yeah, no, that's I, what I mean. Like I, I how have old no shame. Were you when you sang in front of the whole school, like eighteen. It was this year. That's oh. what I mean. Like oh. I have no shame. And like I thought you took me like when you're eighteen. No, like I was like yeah, I did the centenary federation. No, song. like I was eight. I sang in front of my whole school for our graduation. So it was like it was formal too. Rogue. It was, and my dad was crying in the crowd, and I looked up at him. Like and tears, and or tears, like, like tears, and I went up to him like, after the game, and I was like, why are you crying? He goes. I can't swear again, but he was like, that was horrible, Caitlin. And I, was like, <laughs> I thought you were going to say that was beautiful. And I was like, I was like, what? But he goes, and every time we speak about it, he goes, it's, it was good, bad, because it was like shit. Like I sung horribly, but it was good because everyone loved it. So, and I've left a legacy on that school. Everyone loves yeah, it. Yeah, you so, went up, just butchered no, it. <laughs> it was horrible. Yeah. And my, I have a younger brother in, that, um, in year eight. And he, yeah, saw him on the Instagram. Oh, he pops you? up every so often. <laughs> I ran a real deep dive. <laughs> no, but he's copped it a bit, but I just don't care. Like, and I, yeah. that's something I really pride myself in. I think like not caring what people think. I think it's different when it comes to like footy in the sense of performing. Yeah. I a hundred percent care what people think, but Absolutely. as a person, like I know my morals and I know what I want to brand myself as. And I just really don't care. Yeah. So. I'm just going to message uh, Ella real quick. I got one more question. Ella's in in two minutes. I'm just going to tell her I'm five behind. That's Okay. Um, she just messaged me. We've been going forever. Uh, it's only been 40 minutes. Oh, really? Minutes, yeah. Oh. Yeah. It feels like forever. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? A good thing. Oh, thank God. Is she at the front? I'm not sure. <laughs> she just said she's lost. Will you cut this out? Yes. Hello. I'm not going to leave this in here. Hey. <laughs> just, just up. It's getting <laughs> Let me message Alan real quick. It's getting cut out so you're saying hey to the microphone. <laughs> I'll wrap this up. Now, you told me a story before we started recording about running into oh, okay. Mark Blitzarff's Jed Buse. Yeah. Please, so please. Oh, the story needs to go. I went on a two-week holiday. He's going to love this. He's, yeah, like, he's not going to see it. But no, he's going to love me it. talking We've about it. We've got 1,300 TikTok <laughs> followers. He'll, he'll find it. I was going to say, but... Joel and I went on a two-week holiday down south just to kind of escape football. Yeah. We didn't really escape football. We trained <laughs> nearly every day. But yeah, great escape. Yeah. But we went running in Margaret River and these two blokes were running and they were so fit. And Joel recognised them before I did, but basically Mark Blitzer and Jed Buse were running. Yeah. Um, I don't think I'd recognise Jed Buse if I saw him. I didn't recognise him. I'd recognise Mark did, Blitzer. Joel did. Tall, blonde. No, yeah. You know, athletic. I, I knew would who not he recognise Jed Buse. Either. Joel. He's just one of those players. Yeah. That I could have dinner with him and not know no, who yeah. Jed Buse. I think we, Joel didn't recognise him at first. We ran past him and he was like, oh my God, I know who he is. But yeah. Joel's like a footy head, so yeah. of course he knew. But anyway, they drove... We didn't really speak, but we kind of just said, hey, as we ran past and stuff like that. Yeah. And then their car like drove around to where we were. And they stopped and got out of the car and we were just kind of like, what? Because you can't get out that way. Yeah. And next minute, you know, like they're, they've they come over the fence and they started talking to us. And it was almost like like roles in reverse. Like we were the celebrities. And yeah. Uh, in a way, I was deal. like, oh, they definitely just want a photo. Like we should just ask them if they want a photo. Give them yeah. a little five minutes of fame. But they were such good blokes. Like I think we chatted for like 10 minutes and it was good because we could speak about like obviously Mitch because he's gone to Geelong and yeah. obviously we knew him. But 
um, they recognise me and yes. they know my name and I have a little follow from him. So yeah. my life's complete. But Yeah. Did he follow you first? No, I followed okay. him. <laughs> but no, as soon as Still he followed very me, impressive. I rung Joel. I was like, no shit, like you won't believe what happened. And he was like, well, I go, oh, well, he might blitz half followed me. And he yeah. goes, as soon as that happened, Joel chucked him a follow so he could get yeah. one, but he hasn't got one. So. Oh, see, that's what you get for being a bandwagon, oh, Joel. No. Pathetic, mate. I know you're watching. <laughs> Caitlin, that's all I've got. Thank you so much okay. for coming out. It's been a it's been a pleasure having you yeah. um, throughout the year. See, it's been 11 months since, I know. you know, the first time I had you on. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I just loved every step of the way. Oh, stop it. Thank that's you. It's been so great. <laughs> Thank yeah. you very much for coming on. Best of luck next week. Thank you. See you later.